Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another Traders Community Podcast. Uh, welcome to all the traders out there, investors out there, punters, and of course, the dribblers. So we're going to go through today uh, what we've seen today in the markets uh, and what's affecting. None of what we do is financial advice. So we're just giving an insight, a real market insight that is, from real traders taking the time to go over the day's markets and trades so to help improve your trading and risk exposure. If you like what we do, subscribe to the channel, click the like button and smash the bell. Now let's get into it. So welcome, we have Meta Johnny here. The glorious Madavi and VR, Velocity Radar. So it's been a very, very violent, volatile few days. So stressful, uh, a lot on edge with the intensity of it all. So part of it is uh, to walk people through that. I'm sure we all feel it and we'll go through the trades. Most of you know the strategy that are, are regulars. Uh, how we've been positioned short off the waves as far as uh, the financial markets go, long more towards commodities and energy in particular, and trading around that basis, and then taking opportunities through the day as they present themselves uh, with earnings plays, um, and also uh, in news or squeezes plays, stuff like that, particularly in the energy sector. So we're going to go through that. So without further ado, let's jump in and look at where we are. And right now we have oil in another, it's been a very, very volatile few days. And I haven't seen markets like this as far as oil goes or commodity goes, uh, other than natural gas around energy seasons and hurricanes and whatnot, since the heady days of 150 oil. So that's where we're at. Um, and it's, it's gone mind boggling. There's an article on uh, Traders Community today re um let me just turn that off uh in case it's a margin call no only joking about uh nickel being shut it's still shut it's not going to open at the earliest be friday after a major chinese bank basically has blown up a chinese construction bank massive margin call um so it's a question whether they get the money basically which they will but they need everything to settle back down I hear talk of two to eight billion dollars in margin calls. To put it in perspective, that's on top of all that uh, financial meltdown over in China from the property index. So that's what's going on. It went over a hundred thousand or something, wasn't it? The price or a hundred dollars, whatever. Yeah, hundred thousand. Crazy, right? And then it closed at eighty thousand before they shut it down. By the time it got to London, um, and that's a market that doesn't have daily limits. So. If that's a question that someone brought up today. Gold uh, itself broke to almost all-time highs today. Uh, we'll go through that. Uh, oil and gas, of course, we'll go through those. The energy stocks we traded. Um, the catalyst for those markets. Uh, and it was actually a very pure trading day as far as S&P went. Very clinical off the charts and incredible moves. Uh, and I haven't seen much of that other than extreme volatility, and it's day after day. Uh, so it is hard work, uh, so concentrate. So here we are, S&P down at 4.4161 on the S&P, Russell back under 2000, 1956, NASDAQ 13, triple two, um, NAS, uh, sorry, natural gas 46.12, it's been churning around a mixture between geopolitical and domestic uh, issues. Volatility's been the highest for a long time. Got as high as 30, over 36 actually. Came down to 30 and a half and got back to 34. And that pretty well sums it all up. So what should we get into first? The S&P? Uh, let's have a quick look at that, shall we? So... To run down uh, what we saw today, 
let's go over a quick overview of the markets because the Russell actually closed up today. And if you recall, Madhavi's been pointing out that um, that's been the strongest one. So that actually finished with a gain uh, of 11 points today, 11 handles, 6%. NASDAQ fell 35 points. Uh, S&P's fell 30 points. All these were up at one point. Um and the Dow fell 185 points. So, and the Dow was up 585 points at the high and down 238 off the low. So, they closed all pretty near their low, right? So, so let's look at the S&P. If we just look at them all, eyeball all the charts together, we have the S&P weekly. Again, our core short, as you all know, is off the 50. And so what we do with that means that if that's our bias, we're going to tr maintain that short when we can, right? So, uh, and you trade off that um, that structure. So these things move very, very quickly. So if we look at the, the quarterly, we see the daily, excuse me, move down again very violently. It's all red spuds. This was green at one point. So remember, if you're purely a, a lot of these machines, if the longer term ones don't even put a trade on until the end of the day. Now, there's constant algorithms that trade through the day. So you've got to keep all that in mind. That's why the daily closes are so important to what goes on, okay? Um, so that's an important thing to see there. So we, if we look at what we actually traded off today, is more the short term. So we're going to look at the hourly. Let me blow this up for you. So this market was something else today. It came off, came down hard short. Uh, as you know, that was our position. It bounced strongly into Europe. That's this pre-market stuff here. Because there was a uh, talk of the EU uh, moving forward on a bill to um, increase military spending. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, and also energy spending. And we saw that again today with Joe Biden. I don't know if Biden mentioned military, but he certainly managed um, mention uh, energy and, of course, pointing the bad finger at the oil company. So apparently it's still all their fault, their policy the warmongering and all that sort of stuff. So get your head around that, people. So what did that do? Right? So remember, we talk all the time about buy the rumour, sell the fact. That was the high, right, on oil and everything today. And then a lot of this volatility was around his uh, speeches, right? So the second run... So anyway, these moves are massive moves. This was off minus two eights. So it was actually a pretty good buy signal. Uh, obviously a really good buy signal. So we were actually able to, I don't, I can't remember Madhavi and I mentioned capturing this many S&P points in day trading, basically, you know, for a long time, both ways. Um, and it was, it was one of those markets that I stayed out of a lot of it, other than three big trades, really. Um, and now all based technically and on the sentiment changes. So that was this move here that came out of Europe, as we mentioned. It sold off again on that. Um, the, this big move after, uh, I think it was this one, that was because they re-ran an article that's, uh, uh, or a headline that Zelensky said yesterday um, that part of their deal was... It's not set that they need to go to NATO. Now, that came out yesterday. It was rerun. The people that either... The market obviously either didn't, outside of currencies, either didn't make notice of it yesterday or um, they did You know, it was totally foreign to them. That came up. Then it, everyone became aware that it was um, old news. But... Okay, fine. And then the next four was when Putin, after already the sanctions on, came out and said, oh, we're going to not sell our exports and all that sort of stuff uh, outside of Russia till the end of the year. 
So I don't know how that you know. So anyway, that's that's the geopolitical, I guess, catalyst out of it all. Um, so, I mean, very vicious, vicious moves. And remember, we, we stress a lot not to be get caught with a dribbler motives because what that means is you're going to get really bearish here and really bullish here. And when it gets confusing like this, I just stay out. Now, you can trade at hardcore under five minutes uh, if, if that's all you trade. So if we go to five minutes, it traded very nicely technically. So look at the high today, plus one eights. Look at the low, minus two eights. You can't get more pure maths than this, right? So th this is what it's doing. So just classic whole grid, um, these kind of trades, right? Then we pull back here to the top of the cloud. Um, for those, you know, there's a lot more to it. Remember, you need the whole reason of Nova Wave is to make it easy on you. I mean, personally, I can be in... I mean, I like to say too much about what we do, but I can be in 70 positions. Futures, spreads, the whole lot, options, that. So you need to have a clear mind, and it does get pretty intense, and that is why I have a... So I categorically will use these benchmarks. I will get out of some stuff too early, but it's, some, it's better than getting out too late. And when you have, when you have volcanic events like what's going on, um, you limit what you're exposed to. Uh, you use uh, derivatives, the options, or whatever, so that and you don't go near stuff you don't understand, right? So very clinically, you can see this. Um, and by the end of the, so did I even? I think the only long I did was this, right? And so the shorts covered. I didn't go long in any of this. I think I might have tried. We had a lot of trades uh, yesterday. And all it did was cause angst, right? So I just sold off the sell signals, right? Um, and then, at the, lo and behold, at the end of the day, it closed down here. So I mentioned at the start, if you're just a, a long-term trader, you just stayed short all day because of where it closed on a daily and weekly. The danger is by doing that, if this continues, this is a hundred and... Shit, that's a hundred, excuse the French, that's a hundred and twenty handle move right there, right? And you don't, you know, one of these will keep going. So what's interesting, if I was, and I don't even have to do it, but I can guarantee you when I get on with the dribbler kind of mindset out there, all over the Twitters and deleting that never loses, they're making fun of shorts up here, right? Right? And then it's just mindless. Don't make fun of anyone. Just do your business. Um, I don't know. I think so. There's a lot of information there. And I try to keep it as black and white, as real as what it is. And everyone, some people just want this little move. Some people don't want to trade it. If you don't trade futures, this is just an indicator that's going to move your underlying stock, right? Be aware of it. Um, here is that triangle that we've been watching. And look where we close, right at it, right, uh, on the DJ. Here's the other, so they can see it from a distance, right? Is it under? I think it's under it, actually. So if that megaphone's correct, it's a face, false move. On the weekly, we have a t slightly different setup. Okay, let's bring Madavi on talk about the NASDAQ. That's his little baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is something too that's too vicious for me that one um you yeah, know this morning was a shocker the afternoon was a fiesta <laughs> reminds me i gotta go to fiesta and buy some spices for dinner but um Not, they know me they know my name <laughs> so walk us through what you saw there mate well, I mean, this morning, you know, um, I should have started trading early in the, in the day. It was going down, um, so we, we had some nice sell-off. And the closer we got to the open, you know, I wasn't sure what the market, how it was going to go, if we were going to bounce all the way back, you know. We had some, we had, a, we had one huge rally that came back, then we just started selling off. 
So what I did is I picked the best pair trading, the best idea I could come up with. I'm sure your your dog could have done better on me this morning, but uh, <laughs> as, uh, I picked the uh, Russell. You know, my great idea, and it wasn't that great. Let me tell you, you know, and I picked the Russell and to go long, um, no short, and I picked the NQ to go long, and by the time I got out of that wreck. <laughs> It was a bloody morning, <laughs> you know, and just got, if you look at the chart of it, if you bring it all up, I mean, that is the worst pair trade. Which one do you want me to bring up? The Russell? Yeah. yeah. You can see which one is the strong one and which one is the weak one. Oh, yeah. yeah Russell was the only one to close up today. Yeah, so there's Russell. These markets are always moving and changing, so you're like, why don't you just flip out of it or, or get into it? It's not that simple because, um, you know, I, I had some other, you know, my futures account and my stock accounts are kind of locked in together, you know? So, you know, so you, you, there's a margin issues and stuff. Sometimes I uh, flip out of the whole things and figure it out, so there's a... And by the time I see it sometimes, you know, <laughs> and so, the, you know, so it takes a little process to get out of stuff. Yeah, it was um, one heck of a, uh, so I, as I said, I haven't traded to Russell for a couple of weeks, actually, um, but it has been the strongest one. But internally, I choose to kind of trade segments of uh, stocks and stuff like that, but um that's if we look if we go back to the Nasdaq here, it did the same thing as the Spoos, but much more brutal. And it's kind of why I prefer the S and P. Um, this, like, yes, you can make a lot more money on the Nasdaq as far as the points go, and it moves a lot more. But geez, you can get unwound on it. And remember, I said you want to keep your mind in the right spot, right? So I try to avoid things that um, can get me in the wrong spot. Now, the difference when that happens, and we'll go through that in a minute, is stocks, when there's a basket, which has happened in the last two days, are running hot, right? But stuff you got to be wary of. Some of it I won't go near. But it, it's not... And so it's very aggressive trading in that, and you want to be well-versed in trading. Otherwise, I mean, I've seen many of the dribbler think it's easy and they follow and then they blame other people for it. We see that all the time on the Twitters and there's some good stock rooms. That, sorry, mate. I'm to go tell you what happened over here. And, you know, the hardest thing when you get in positions like that is being able to get your mind and taking the loss, right, which is ill substantial, and being able to get into the right mind head and being able to get everything back on track. You know, it, it ruined a really good morning, and these, this thing was ripping, I mean, 100 points. I mean, no... Oh, no, the... the, the, the I remember the... Uh, so, I remember that was one of our best spoos trades. It was like 100. I mean, it was crazy how it left. And just, so... And Emma Darby goes, no, no, what are you talking about 100 points? It's like three, 500 or something. What the hell? Um, but he was talking about the NASDAQ, right? And here's another important thing that people never get. And this is why we use timing, time, the market, timing, price, right? Trade in front of you. So if you have the right strat, like time, of, this is why this whole Nova Wave thing works with Murray and Itchy and you know previous levels. When you're getting long, right, it's if something, so you don't know for sure the event that's going to happen, right? You're not God, you don't know it, etc. right? But you want to put yourself in the best position to take advantage of where the most pain is, not to be a subject of the most pain. So that's why you sell on plus two eights, um, buy on minus two eights, etc., and everything else that comes together. So we would, we'd already taken profit on the short because of failed double bottom, uh, all our other rules. So we were fortunate to be long, 
And all of a sudden, you're up 20, right? I'm talking S&P, not... Uh, and then the news comes out, and you can't get out if you want to, right? It's so fast, and oh, what happened, right? So that's a very important part of the whole thing. And that good shops work like that, right? Um, so... Now, now, you think you're already on top. Like this runs over. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what's the saying? And you always say, don't don't count it till you're out, right? Don't you can't count your profit till you're out, till it's crystallized. Um so what a lot of people do is, is they become lazy and so the downside of that is someone like me is not gonna get the twenty dollar stock pump or whatever, you know, or the that sort of thing, because I'm getting out in levels. Uh, futures are a little bit different because it's directional. We have a strategy. I mean, occasionally you get lucky, but usually it's lucky for me anyway, right? <laughs> um, but you want to give, put yourself, the whole key is putting yourself in the best position and not avoiding and not hang on and not getting these bloody, I mean, sometimes I get pissed off is the nicest way to put it. When I see stuff, um, that people that have just never been in the fire telling people what it is. It's kind of, I don't know how to do it. But so, look, <laughs> my background is in sports a lot, body contact sports, Madhavis is too, and at high levels and all that. And so it's like having a footy coach or a, a fighting coach tell you how to, fight right or play footy or rugby right right you see what i'm saying so trading's like that you want to get and understand that and it's almost like until you've taken your first loss you don't even know what we're talking about right but it's a very intense world and it's all nice and dandy when stuff just goes up right but the real world's not like that and this is not really that unusual what we're seeing right now the moves are extreme Yes, in oil and nickel. But that same stuff happened in stocks for a year and a half. Up, right? But that was all normal. Why? Because everyone was long or didn't understand it. I mean, anyone disagree with what I'm saying there? I mean, and we've all been there. Now, so look, and the other side, trading isn't a nice freaking game. So let's get that out of the way. Uh it's a it's it's an aggressive game, emotions, there's money involved, all that sort of stuff, right? So it is intense during the day, but you gotta let your pressure off. So you gotta either walk away from your screen, go for a run, uh, muck around a little bit when 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 time have it, music, whatever it is. So that's important. That's why I always say on the weekend, I ain't I, I give you know you get away you do, you don't focus on the market twenty four seven and all of us so everything's already out there right it's how you react to it and understand your own biases I mean that that's kind of the the best advice and that's why we try to say what it's really like I mean and we we do and we don't all make money all the time you're gonna get smashed you're gonna make money. You're going to be aware of it and you're going to stuff up, right? You know, um, and that's all part of it. You want to limit <laughs> limit it where you can. And when it gets too edgy, take a break. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. And, and so it, that's the nicest way to say it, right? Uh, I think, I don't know. Um, yeah. That's the coach in me. But um, uh, the great part about days like today is... You know, you you if you mess up in the morning, I mean, you still have a chance to uh, if you trade right, to be able to get back into the game, and no matter what you, how bad it was in the morning, and you know, at least strike a green day, so you don't have a red day and you don't lose your confidence. Because like I said, days like these are very few. Uh, sometimes you go years without days like this, and we've been getting. Uh, Dude, it's unbelievable. Yeah. For a while now. So, what day are we? We're when? Are we Tuesday or when? We're Tuesday. We're only bloody Tuesday. <laughs> For God's yeah. sake! And, but we're having moves. Like I, I mean, I swear to you. Can ask Johnny and AJ and and 
uh, Madhavi, I said, dude, I've never seen a spooze like this on the same day. And I'm, I can trade, right? I mean, it was unbelievable. I'm not going to say what it was, but wow, you know? Um, and I'm more mainly trading oil. That's the whole bizarre, like, I mean, it's amazing markets, but you got to keep your wits about you. And I take breaks. I don't always in stuff, right? Um, but today it got, it was so many on because a lot of things are hedging things and there's interplays and, and you got to take your opportunities when they're there. These markets aren't always there. You also got to avoid, and I made this point many times, stuff you don't normally trade. Say, trade like, uh, Things like futures you don't normally trade, wheat and all this sort of stuff that gets limit up, limit down. You can, you can be right and not get out, right? And I made a point. We I fiddled in it, but I did it via the ETF, right, a few times. So don't get dragged into stuff you don't know or don't understand or think you're missing out. It's much better to miss out and lose everything and get destroyed. And as Madhavi said, not just in money, you can lose confidence, you can lose all that. Um and that's why, you know, it sounds like we har harper on about what we see as warnings. But, you know, we've we've let our guard down and let people in we shouldn't and stuff like that. And we, then we realise after. But that'll affect your uh, game. So if you're new to it, you've got to really avoid it, right? Uh, avoid that. But be aware it can be a tough bloody game, right? You know, that's why I liken it to things like rugby and football and stuff, right? Um, but then also it's fantastic if you master it, right? And the problem with these moving markets is sometimes you can't even see the quotes on these things. These things are moving so fast, you don't even know. <laughs> you just hope you got the right direction when this thing settles out. <laughs> I mean, it starts ripping, and you're like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's it's literally that fast on some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, and that's why, I like, how, I bitch about getting out of stuff too early sometimes, which, you know, which I'm sure annoys Madhavi. But um, some, it's just better sometimes, you know, obviously like some of them, you get lucky and you get all right. But it's more in these fast markets when you don't. Like, here's a good example. I So I was in quite a few positions. We're in quite a few positions. We're helping each other out. And there's one that we missed, but I left my bid on it. Remember that? What was that? Freaking last time I buy one of those renewables, right? So anyway, the thing we miss it, it's up like a dollar fifty. Next minute I see all this red. I had because I had so many on, I had left an order out there and it got and it got holded and then it got hit to the downside, right? So that sort of thing can happen. So as much as we are when you're busy, that was one thing that snuck under, right? Now it wasn't catastrophic or anything, but a loss is a loss, right? And then you got to trade it, and you got to either keep it or whatever. So these things can happen. Now that that was in a small stock, nothing major, right? So that's not going to happen in futures or something. But the lesson is, know what you're in, cover it, and if you're new, don't be in those that many stocks and all that sort of stuff. And we tend in that situation, like I said, you're going with the flow unless they're the long term swing stuff like we've had in energy for you know, almost a year now, I guess. Um, but you still got to manage them, right? Just because you got it long term, it hits your targets. I mean, I, what, what was the one I saw last week? Alcoa, early, it went up. But you've, you've made 50 bucks. Who cares if you haven't made eight, you know? Sorry? You know, that's what's crazy. So a market's like this, right? There's some great at the end of some great things. Mm. We need everything costs money and it's... it's it's expensive usually, you know, mm -hmm. especially in these futures and, and queues and everything. So sometimes you're there's opportunities for you if you know what you're doing to be able to maximize your every buying power. You know, if you go long and short and stuff, you know, and then you get back more buying power and you get into other stocks that are moving fantastically and are pretty, you know, it looks. That direction is going to go. The direction is pretty, pretty easy to tell, you know. So, you if you know how to manage your money, how to hedge things right, and get the buying power back, 
it's become really helpful. Because no matter how much money you got, you can always use more on days like this sometimes. Well, that's a, that's a good point. And managing your risk. So in, so we get, we'll go through some of those stocks in a minute. We just wanted a, I guess, a bit of a pre-game, right? And, um, and, and the other thing is we're all different. Like, so me and Madhavi can get pretty intense. So, but we're aware of that. And by the end of the day, we can't. But um, that's what the market is like, right? Like, not that last Friday, but the Friday before that, we were trading... And I waited until like nine, what is it, one fifty nine one fifty nine and ten seconds to get out of this futures position. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was short, right? And I was trying to flatten out for a week and not even worry about it. On accident, I ended up long in a nice size position. And you see what happened last Monday? We opened it down huge, and that was just a dumb mistake trying to get every last second out of it and it cost me it was costly you know and kind of ruined the week as Thomas said so maybe you want to leave an extra minute or two and make sure you do things right I just did that and it was really costly and I feel really stupid about it <laughs> yeah I mean it's easy to do yeah, stuff like that um since I took the hit I want to remind you guys so <laughs> And I'll be down on that. And on a day where the market's going to be down huge, and you got to start from behind like that, just throws off your whole week. And which that was the start of my week the week before. And, you know. Right. And these are crazy. I mean, as far as geopolitically, that's the bit that's kind of unseen in the Western world. And well, it's unseen by us. Our forefathers have seen it, obviously. So let's get back on the oil. So the re So th this is been a very directional trade if you've wanted to see it now oil's like a, one of those things that somehow goes down that partisan, partisan group so people didn't want to understand what it did who fell into that whole trap of bad oil bad you don't need oil all that sort of stuff and we've talked about that and that's how we ended up with oil where it is all that very very bad energy policy right this last bit comes from running a war right at the top of all this, right? So just understand that and how that plays along. And that's why it's very important to understand what these waves mean. So if you've got time, I would go research the work for Ralph Elliott and people like that um, that are good at understanding what it is. It's just people and people's fear and reaction. This is all fear up here. This isn't greed. This is fear out of necessity, right? And oil. Oil is essential until otherwise for, it's not just for driving cars, it's for plastics and foods, everything, right? Transport. So understanding greed and fear then puts you in why this is a three or a five, right? Anyway, this is a weekly chart and we're over plus two eights and stalling over it. That can be a scary thing if this gets legs because it means uh, did I do it on this chart or the other one? So it means it can do crazy things. It's so, so the reason this is exaggerated is two things. We shut down all our production, but guess what? The population's still growing. No one was allowed to borrow for more storage because you couldn't lend to, um, uh, what do you call it? Oil and gas, etc., etc. Then we have big players off the market, um, we, all, we, we have the Iran deal, we have Libya constant uh, in problems, and we have Russia, then we have all the ESG stuff going on in the West. So it's a very, it's a game that was fairly easy to predict for those in the sector, right? Uh, so you can, yeah. So obviously people in areas that understood it have done very well. So we've been fortunate there. So, okay, you don't want to hear that, but that's important to understand because that will change. And actually, it's zero week right now in Houston, which is all the big oil people, politicians, all that out there. So do yourself a favour and keep up on it. Um, I'm, there's probably stuff on uh, Trace Community, but follow the good reporters on that that follow it. Um, and we can men we'll mention them on Twitter, etc. Okay, so there's your weekly. Now look at your daily. 
So bear in mind what I just said with that's a plus two eights on weekly. We've actually come, so remember those that know the Chikau, we've actually rebalanced on a daily. That's what's amazing and scary perhaps, Johnny. So this is a, I put in this extended move. If we explained this yesterday, why? So I don't want to waste time for those. So go back and listen to tomorrow's podcast and all that. So if we break here, this is a possibility, as I said, the 150. Right? But nothing in this market take for granted. Look at the bar of this contract today. Right? That's 116 to 128. Same thing yesterday. These are big, big bars. Each contract is $1,000 a point. A dollar, sorry. Right? These are ten to $16,000. This is oil. So you can only imagine what happened on nickel, right? So at least you got... I've only seen this hold it twice, I think. Maybe three times. In eight years or ten years, whatever it bloody is. Anyway, so that's the crazy stuff that can happen. So be aware of your risk and your punning and all that. Obviously, at these levels, bear, at when some of these big oil companies break even on in reality, not the accounting, 16, 17 bucks a barrel, right? There's obviously more expensive and it's all the really weak ones are 80 and 9 and stuff like that. No, no, sorry, not weak, expensive. So there's a lot of money being made now. And now they're playing politics. As I said at the top of the hour, they're blaming oil companies who were shamed on, told they couldn't drill. Why are you? And they're, they're, I can guarantee you, they're very aware of that whole being accused of, um, what, what am I talking about, Madhavi? Uh, profiteering, right? The tax and all that is unbelievable. So if they really wanted to, to not gouge the bloody consumer, the tax would be a different thing. They take off tariffs, all that sort of stuff. So just keep all that in mind and don't get caught up in that. You're a trader anyway, but you're also going to be affected by that. Okay, so if we go to... Um, where's the short-term one on here? Do you see it? Did I just get rid of it? <laughs> uh, anyway, here's the... Brent is doing exactly the same thing. And I mentioned that yesterday... That's actually a good thing because it projects there's some stability in the market, okay? So if we go, um, I must have changed this one. Yeah, so this is daily. Let's go down to 10 minutes to show what happened today. Okay, so a lot of this is purely buy the rumor, sell the fact stuff, right? So when all that deal, of which is well telegraphed, we all knew about it by yesterday that Biden's going to ban or America's going to ban uh, Russian oil, right? So that's this. So all those oil stocks, remember, I'm already getting out of them all morning, if you talk, remember, guys. And I was getting out of those fast money ones we're going to talk about in a minute. Why? Because I'm not the only one that's going to do that. That's what's going to happen. We're not sitting here hoping and praying. And I'm not buying it here, right? We're buying it on good setups and all that sort of stuff. So keep that in mind. That's how the market works. But what happens? Good cream always rises to the top. Despite all this, things like Exxon and Chevron don't just trade on the WTI spot price, right? And they all hit 52-week highs. There's a much more after this. There's a much more involved. So in your decision-making, remind yourself of that. And look at, use these grids if you're trading technical to help your trade and, and if you want to know where these are all come on we use sierra charts fantastic dealing it's the best out there if you want to know how to get these dm us hit us up on youtube go on the website whatever and we'll explain it or you know help you out all free too i might add why do we do it for free madavi it's not because we're not guys, because no one ever says we are. So, uh, good question. <laughs> exactly. Is that why? <laughs> anyway, jokes aside. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but seriously. Um, I mean, it is kind of more intense way, but trade at the market, right? 
um, particularly now more than ever, this well, you just saw an S and P market and an oil market that moved ten, twelve bucks on oil. What did we say on uh, S and P? A hundred and something, and uh, up and down all these things, right? So, and and you got to size yourself accordingly, right? Um, so anyway. Natty, as we said, that was a big level yesterday. Five dollars domestic, domestic at play. The pump all came before, then it goes back to domestic. You can see it on the weekly. So work yourself top down approach, right? Um, and then you can see it here, perfect on daily. Remember off that level, and we were fortunate enough to be short and then get a catch along off this today, right? So. Remember, systematically use your chart and trade. You don't have to be in everything. Just, you know, we are in a lot of things, but we're not in everything. Um, and so I think that that's pretty well all we need to cover on that. Let's go back on gold. So gold was one that we mentioned. Um, well, Madhavi's had a bigger longer term play, as you know, but we, we took that as a trade here. When it broke this level here, um, and we talked about some in the room, I um, also bought, um, uh, what was it, Newmont Mining, which is NEM, Gold, which is Symbol Gold, which is Barrick and Gold Corp. Uh, they merged a few years back. And there was a few others. Um, but anyway, look what this did. This almost went to an all-time high, but it's the highest price since whatever that date was, right? What's that? August uh, twenty, and we're only a few bucks off this all-time high. Twenty seventy-six. We're twenty forty-five now. What was the high today? Uh, is it up here? Twenty seventy. So we were six dollars from the all-time high today, Madobi. Yeah, we're pretty close. We're gonna test that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, you know, especially tonight, especially if a lot of uh, picks up over there in Ukraine, something happens there. We could, if we break that level, we could hit 200. <laughs> you see how this oil trades? Well, yeah, so that's what I was going to mention. Not just oil, but nickel and all these sort of things. So, well, well, we got to get to that nickel trade. It's insane. What's this, some stuff happening here? I was shocked by it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're not easy to shock. So, um, no, 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 no. It was. I tried to trade, but thank God I did it. I didn't realize how expensive it was. <laughs> you know? <laughs> expensive in more ways than one. And hey, don't forget, if you're in that, you could be the right way. But your money's tied up in all that, right? So if you're talking about using your money. But so remember what this is. You know that, right? It might be closed for like all this week even. Yeah, yeah. So LSE's already said that... Uh, they're meeting on Thursday, so today's Tuesday, right? So um, we know that that one big, chi I think it's called the China Construction Bank, uh, is the main one. They've given them a few days, and the moment they announced that, of course, it went up even more and all that sort of stuff. So actually, Madhavi, if you can share, you heard something about the reason, because uh, I was surprised that it didn't have a limit on it. But you saw, if you can share that with us, you heard something about that today. Uh, their exact words were like, we're going to close down because of short sellers. There's only a few market makers in this instrument, right? I think there's, the guys said like, uh, like 50, 10 maybe, 10, 11 of them. There's six of them that, are, that, that, are, that could be in trouble or something. Right. Uh, they shut it down to give them a chance to, I guess, to stock to, you know, get people who are short, nervous, and get them to cover it. But you can't cover it. Yeah, how, how are people trading these when it's shut down? I guess there are foreign markets, maybe? Well, other, um, I don't know enough about it, but that was in Asian trading, so that was in China. But I, LSE, I, I, you know, I've, I've never traded nickel, and, and I know Bill put an article on uh, uh, Traders Minute about it. It's a good article, but it's got a chart of it. But I know that... Um, so the thing is, with this, this has been building for a while, right? 
this isn't because of Russia. Russia's and Eva's oil. Look, it's pushed all these things for sure. But nickel, lithium, um, fuck, what's the other one? But there's a bunch of these metals that are used in electric vehicles, windmills, stuff like that. The new technology. They're limited. They're hard to get. And that's why a lot in the oil business, we're like on these electric cars. I mean, what the, you know, they can't afford to do it. You mean, we're not talking about Tesla. We're talking about the all the new ones that you're all seeing down in dribbler heaven or dribbler hell, really. Sorry. Um, so the sheer cost of it is unbelievable, let alone all the variations. But it's like any new industry, really. So then you throw in the fact that whilst Russia isn't massive in nickel, there's still 5% of just raw nickel. And I say it's in that article, but it's 13, 15% of, of something like high grade or pure nickel, you know. So the other big, so there's that for the cars, but also stainless steel comes from this. So there's a big demand for stainless steel in housing and everything now too, and cars. Well, sorry, mate. Um, how do you, a lot of people don't, can't process it the way Russia can. Russia yeah, that's that high high thing, I think, that high, yeah. Den- it, yeah. It makes it very important. The, the battery markets. Well, let me find that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's definitely in that. Um, let me see if I can find that article. Yeah, while you're talking, go ahead, mate. I'll find it, I'll so, find it. No, um, the Russian is one wants to have, have the facilities available to make the, I guess, chromium or nickel to a certain thing for batteries and stuff that a lot of other places don't have. And if they do, they're already tapped out to production. Well, that's the thing. They're already tapped, right? Yeah, so that's this bit. And they can't go any higher and to basically try to put Russia out of business, like not anybody buy from, that will be extremely difficult. And it would, it could hurt a lot of these car makers. So that's what you're talking about here. So Russia accounts for five to six percent of world nickel supply. So that's the basic nickel we're talking about. So this, uh, the high purity is what they call it. So seventeen percent of that production is what Madhav is talking about comes from there, and that's from the CBA, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. So I always go to banks. Or, or sorry, analysts that actually know their stuff. For the same reason I warn you about dribblers. <laughs> Go to the people that... So if we're talking commodities, I'm going to look at an Australian bank, a Canadian bank, something like that. You know, or Goldman, all that's always good, of course, too. But be care- look at your sources. So these blokes are telling him, and he quotes this in this article. It's on the site. Go to it. Uh, Nickel source, 500% Chinese bank short squeeze. It's about what happened. There's a chart. But the important bits, this last sentence, Russia account for 5 to 16, and this paragraph, this phrase, 17% of high purity nickel production, right? So there's many bifurcations and unintended consequences out of all this. Now, interesting thing though, when you read further from that headline, there is massive amounts of this already in storage that different car companies or brokers, you know, have warehoused it. So if done properly, it's actually not going to be a, a scary thing. But tell that to, but the reality is that futures price went up to a hundred thousand dollars. Right? So all that's nice and dandy, but a lot of people got destroyed on that, right? Hey John, hey John's gonna go to his kid's baseball game, so let him um, put his part in before he's gotta go. Sorry, mate. Uh, Johnny's got to go to his kid's baseball game, yeah. so let him talk about it. Oh, game. okay. Go ahead, Johnny. Hey, hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, hunters and dribblers. I just wanted to <laughs> touch real base on Bitcoin. As you know, Bitcoin, uh, the overall market's up a little right now, but it has reacted to what's going on with the Ukrainian conflict. And there are sanctions being um, issued, and there's, a, there's actually a committee hearing this week that Biden's putting together to regulate and give some clarity on the use of cryptocurrencies because there's leakage they believe that that may occur without any formal regulations and structure that needs to be put in place. 
So that's a big issue. But the other side of the, the coin is it's helping the Ukrainian people because they're not having to wait for banks and things on that financial end to get help and aid. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, but it's really going to help give clarity in the use, which I think that you, the uh, cryptocurrencies that, that are out there are going to play as a role in, in, in our future and in, in banking, helping people getting things that are playing themselves out right now with this conflict. So it's kind of an interesting uh, point about the orders that are going to be set and the set some of the orders which which they're talking about are all rolling into a CBDC, which is a central banking a digital currency. And what is going to be happening is they're going to be uh, addressing a state committee, a State Department committee, to oversee and to work with our allies to make sure that crypto does have a clear path, a clear path in the future, which plays out very well because in institutions and other things can actually start flowing in to that market, which can help create more of a, a what would you say, a credibility factor. Yeah, and then not, not I guess, not go through the and American uh, banking system or any way that could be used for money laundering and so on, you know. So we were kind of called, Madame and I, talk, I talked about this is a perfect way for this administration to come in and, and kind of take more of a an aggressive approach because now of a reason to have cryptocurrency regulated working with other allies that are around the world and how they're going to be also basically not only subject to but uh, responsible for the same rules as everybody else everybody's playing on the same playground and there's not going to be you know some of the things that I think Many people were worrying about if you know certain countries would allow you know trafficking and arms and you know laundering of money. There are these different new regulations are going to help address a lot of that concern, which further credit um, gives credibility, like I mentioned, to the industry. So just wanted to break that in. I've got to go to my child's uh, baseball game. It starts in about 30 minutes. So and one more you... one more other thing they threw in there. And be aware of this, this is going to be a game changer that America is going to work supposedly on their own cryptocurrency. That's a CBDC. That's yeah, that's one of the other things that's also been be taken up currently. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. So we are all moving to the digital age. We Sad. can't be left behind. We just need to make sure that it's done right and it's not done um, in a way that, that could hurt us or hurt anybody else. Or be able to keep punishing people, oh, yeah. which that's why cryptocurrency, I believe, was set up uh, to kind of give freedom to everybody without yeah. government insight. Yeah, it was meant to be. So I'll let you run with that. Man. All right. Yeah, Go that sounds all, that sounds that awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks, John. So apparently we were a little bit low. Thanks, Bob, uh, for Johnny. So I just turned Johnny up, but I wasn't aware earlier. Um, so hopefully. And that balances a little bit more. Um, I don't know how to turn my... So in the studio, uh, we should all be the equal. Perhaps I'm a little bit too low. Loud, sorry. Let me see if I can turn me down. Um, but we'll fiddle with that. Thanks for letting us know, because we don't know unless you tell us, basically. Um, so, yeah, we'll recap all that uh, later on. But Johnny, I uh, have to leave. But basically... For those, if he was a little bit uh, quiet, was the um, the Biden administration is uh, announced, or Joe Biden announced that they're going to be coming up with some uh, rules for crypto regulation, and basically the gist of it is that this is a really good opportunity to help people to have access to money in the Ukraine situation and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of the past things, uh, a lot of the past things, um, like money, sorry, money laundering and all that, that's what I'm trying to say, has been happening. It's not a new thing, and that's actually being cleaned up. So it's, it's, what's what's the word I'm looking for, madame? Is it like an excuse to um, not do it, right? Well, 
they had an excuse for them to be able to now get oversight on on these cryptocurrencies and once they get it they're going to just keep on adding to it and that's why that's why the whole digital system was all created i believe and you know not to have big brother on your back right 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 yeah so it's going to be interesting what happens um and you know too many what's the word too many uh cooks can spoil it all up but i, I would imagine if i'm you know, in Russia or, look, look, at the end of the, so one, look, <laughs> one thing that gets annoying is people that are just over the top pro-Russia or pro-Ukrainian then become anti-Russian or anti-Ukrainian, right? This isn't about the people, the, Putin is the leader, it's just like, and we've said this before, is like, what Donald Trump does or, or, or um, uh, Joe Biden does, or George Bush does, doesn't mean it's a, it's a, it, for every American. Or Boris Johnson does for England, or Scott Morrison does for Australia, and and that does get a little bit annoying, doesn't it? Because so uh, behind all that, you got normal people in these countries, and that's kind of what the Bitcoin helps. You know, uh, you got to look at the good, not the bad. Basically, it's what I'm trying to say. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that United States is going to have its own Bitcoin, you know? Oh, you know, so... I know, you mean its own digital currency. In fact, they're all, a lot of them are all working to that. The Swiss Central Bank, um, America, uh, who, Singapore, there's some already doing it, but yeah. I think that's with, with inflation going on and stuff, I might just be a rumor thing, you know, about creating maybe a second currency that, you know, one low floater and inflate the other one, pay back your loans. Who knows? Well, it's be interesting. you know, so, so I'm, I'm not a believer in the big reset in that sense. Like as far as, not, not what you're saying. I agree a bit what you're saying. I'll explain why. So if we look at when, when the euro came in, the euro currency, the single currency of Europe. The whole idea, and we know there was cheating, we're not with Greece, with Goldman, it's all well documented, help, you know, get the, they had to have a similar budget uh, deficit and stuff like that. Anyway, at the end of the day, they came up with a number that the drachma, the lira, the Deutschmark, franc would all go in and be a single currency. So there is precedent for that to happen, for sure, Madhavi, yeah. But they've got to be within they've got to be within a certain thing. Now um, so the reason the whole so what they did to pay down to make them equal, they created bonds, and that's where the whole uh, thing of Goldman got involved. Um, so how do they do that this time when the debt's even so much bigger, which is I think the point. They're not gonna they're not gonna bloody cancel it. No way. I know well, people no, think no, that. No, no. I, I give you examples of it. Like, for example, in Iran, they run two currencies and with two different values. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that so they so initially, if we go way back before the euro, there was a thing called the ECU, which was kind of a pre-warmer, and it was really just for exports. So you effectively had two currencies. So, um, yeah, so they do that for international yeah. and, and uh, so there's different reasons for that. But the aim is to have one at one time. So if I'm, if I'm reading it correct, what you're saying is that the, so be it the Bitcoin or whatever, the, the national one, if it becomes multi-country, then they're going to have to wait it somehow like they did the euro, but they will have their own internal currencies is what you're saying right us here euro in there pound there uh, the, oh, you, this is this is what it could happen i'm not saying it is one possibility is so you keep the the dollar one you call it us original dollars right and then you keep the Korean one the new one so for the new one worth xyz compared to the old one but you could inflation the old one, like inflate the hell out of it before you introduce the new one and pay back a lot of debt at like uh, a huge discount. Well, that's, that's what they did in the euro. But 
they, yeah. they it wasn't really a discount though. They still had them on the hook with debt. That's why if you go back that whole pigs thing, if you remember that, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece and yeah. Spain they called it. That was all because all of a sudden the real debt was exposed, right? So that's that's what could happen here. Because at the bank and look, for all that to happen, it's not the policy. So you gotta ask yourself, who runs the US and England? Is it the bankers or is it the politicians? Or some mysterious folks. <laughs> well, I think it's more Yep, that too. But at the end of the day, they're owed a lot of money and they don't want to give it away. They get very, very yeah. greedy. <laughs> well, for example, I'm saying is like kind of like a reverse, reverse in a stock, right? So you go out there, you inflate the hell out of this one, right? Pay back all your debt. Once you get the new one, you, you kind of reverse it out and start over again. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's a very good... Uh, actually, uh, that's uh, not uh, as silly as it sounds, people. That's yeah, kind I mean, of what we I mean, trade, they, right? Some of the stocks we pay trade. Back instead, unless something like this happens. They could not pay back in normal means. Yeah, well, I don't think they ever intend well, to pay it back. I think that's the bottom uh, line, it's, right? It's one way to be clear and get it started. But, boy, it, nothing like this will, will be go down. If something like that happens, it, people are not going to be very happy. Well, so that's a good segue into this, actually. So well, let's talk about... So some of these stocks that we traded today, we recognised yesterday or the day before, and we talked about this, that there's low floaters out there. They're, they're energy stocks. A lot of them are worthless in many ways because of what? The debt situation that Madhavi's talking about, right? Yeah, good answer, Bob. That was that's, the, that, that's my thoughts. Um, uh, Bob just answered it's the bankers. Um, so anyway, sorry, I, we're getting off track. So there's two things. Some of these stocks, uh, like some of them, I don't know much about the one Imperial here, but a lot of these stocks like CIEIA and a lot of these little ones, and just all debt, um, they they got these. If they get this stock market up like this, it's what Madhav is talking about. They can reset their debt, right? They buy, buy a secondary or whatever, right? So when we trade these, we're aware of what's going on. So we trade them up, but we try to go short when we can. What's interesting, last ramp this happened, we couldn't get short, remember? This time I could. I, this one here in Vesco, I was able to short. Remember that? Johnny got mad at me. But remember that? I, there's no way. I actually tried. I looked at this down here not to, to see if there's shares available because I knew about it. Um, so that's resetting the debt effectively, right? By the way, this Imperial that we traded, they... Um, See this pop here after the market we're talking about, that dollar? Madhavi, that's because they bought two product tankers. They came out right then. So that moved it up a dollar well, 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 What happened? Well, where's this? In this is Imperial. And, uh, I just looked back at my message. At 4.07, I got a message that they announced oh. agreement to acquire two product tankers. So remember, they're a, they're a shipping company with oil. Yeah, so they yeah, bought yeah. they brought two product tankers. Products means diesel and stuff like that. The, yeah. the oil products. So that's what that pop was. But look, so this squeeze. You watch the volume now. Remember, I was getting out of all this stuff anyway because I believe buy the rumor, sell the fact. Crude itself gets dangerous. That's liquid. Exxon, all that can be liquid. Remember, I use Oxy as my short against Exxon and all that. But anyway, we're out of this anyway at this point. I think we might have played it in here. But, uh, I'd for, no, I uh, yeah, I didn't, as you know, didn't take advantage of that. But Sunworks is another. So we categorize, were buying renewables, right? You'd think if this government's legitimate, they're going to work to improve the renewables, which means solar energy, um, windmills, etc. Right. So, 
But the other thing you look at is secondaries could come up or $5 is a big level because then it can become marginable at many places, right? So if you notice, there's a pattern here that we incorporate into what we're trading. So Invesco is a very tight float that we know of from Houston. Uh, a lot of these are from Houston, so so we do have an advantage. This one was crazy this morning, HUSA. Remember that one? Look how they fell. So don't chase these things. It doesn't bloody matter if you miss out, right? You don't want this to happen to you. Caught holding the bag. And we'll short them if we can once that comes in. So, but look at it. They lock them up. They lock them up. So it looks like this closes at 14, opens at 11. See all this? This is real. And these companies aren't worth this. I don't even know what this one does. I just I should, right? I guess we looked them up. But they're Houston American. It goes on it. They're thin. You see it. And when they run out, you try to short them, basically, if you're a trader. And then all over Twitter and all these people, oh, the short. Like, you know what? If you're going to buy something that's past the parcel and it's not worth that, take some responsibility. And that's why we go on about the dribblers that are now making out they know what they're talking about, that push people into all these stocks. Oh, I'm not a bull. I was never a bull. How many of those do we know, mate? <laughs> um, yeah, 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 exactly. So how they trade. Now, look at. I'm looking for reasons. So remember, time and price, 8.8. Eight, 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 this one here, we, we more knew it. This recalculate, look overbought. It doesn't mean you got to sell it. But you're not going to buy it like when they're like this. Look at this, plus two eights on USA. I couldn't believe that where I got out of this, could you, this morning? Now, bear in mind, size accordingly. You've got to have a very good execution system, good data, all that sort of stuff. And don't go too big on these things. Now, Sunworks is one that's a little bit more real out of these, but there was other factors on that. I mean, I'm saying so Invesco is a good, is not, I'm not saying they're not bad. So remember, we're not giving you financial advice. We're just seeing, saying what we do, what we do, and what to be careful of. Now, compare these, and we went through oil earlier, to these big fellas. This is Chevron. This is Exxon. This is Occidental, right? So, and this is a little one called Superior Gilling, and I'll just explain that one to you when we get to it. So Exxon... Dude, it gets to $91. I mean, it's extensive. A big guy, people want to take profits or sell puts or whatever they want to do or buy puts. That's why these moves happen. Look at them. Chevron, 174 to 166. 91 and change to 85. So how do I cover this? As I've said, I use Occidental. Why? Because it's the weakest out of the lot. Easy to borrow, easy to hit, right? And I'm using one vehicle because remember, we're in these things hundreds of dollars ago on this one, like 70, 80% because of our book, whatever, right? So do we want to stay in them? Is it worth the risk? Is there better alternatives? Is oil coming down? Oil is bid at 126 right now to put it into perspective. Okay, so that look at these. This is... Think of what this is. This was, people laughed at me when I first said, hey, this is how I hedge it, right? You got your WTI. That was like 10. We'll go through that. I think we went through that. But these are moves. This is how we trade. This is how the pro side of it trades, right? Does it make sense? And we don't touch them. So this little thing here, superior drilling. I didn't know of it, but it rang a bell. And I go, because I'm trying to get out of all this other shit, uh, stuff. Um, I go to Madavi, can you check it out, mate? Because it's got drilling in it. Why It's going late. I guarantee that's why the dribblers are in it. That was what you said, mate. You, you yeah. go, you know who's buying it, the dribbler. He gets on, sees the volume. It wasn't the right volume, right, to justify the price. All that other stuff we just showed you in the previous panel, this panel, had good volume, right? So that you need that to start with. Otherwise, it's a pump and dump, basically. 
right? So anyway, let's yeah, go to well, this. Need the volume to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So I come to this little beauty. He tells me that I'm already getting out of all these, already out of all of the dribbler type oil stocks, for want of a better word. Um, I see this. I right click. Oh, I can short this. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> and then I watched a little bit. There was some big Freddy. Look at the volume here. He was just selling and selling all he could at 180. He's a little stock, right? 180, 180. So he was the axe. We knew the others. We shorted it. Lo and behold, you just sit back and wait. Look what it did. Bang. 180 to 130, and it just dribbled up. So the reality, look, people get mad at you doing that. We're trading it. We take just as much risk buying or selling it, but they're the things that set up. And then they're all one way, because remember, this guy, it's like a lot of these dribblers during the room in these trading rooms, they were buying all these stocks, copying people because people are buying options and they're following. There's a reason they buy. You don't know why they're buying those options, but apparently you do. And just the parage of them all going the same way. But they're all got to get out at some point. So, but the guy selling it is happy to short it. It's not all like GME, like that guy's like Melvin, who's the ego gets him into trouble. It's a, it's very clinical. It's business. These stocks shouldn't be up here. Is the easiest way to say it fundamentally, right? And boom, they're all going to get out. They're all one way. This guy wants to short. He could be what Madavi just mentioned earlier. He could be using this to do a secondary too, right? We don't know that. You don't know. The, on some, I mean, you, we know Exxon and Chevron aren't doing secondaries. They're moving with oil. So there's more, so, and then it rebalances, right? I mean, that was just a real good example, I thought, of that superior drilling, right? Um, but they're all like that. Well, not all like that, but that's the sort of thing you want to be aware of, right? If I'm in, in Servco, oh, this was 50 cents. Look where this come from. Let's have a look at this company. We know they make money. Hang on, it's two hours. Let's go. Four, hour, four hours should get us back a few months ago. Look where this bloody thing was. 75 cents, 75 cents, a dollar, a dollar. Boom, $8. If you're at this company, what do you want to do? You want to take advantage of this price to give you more money. It's not being greedy to keep you going. The guy who's buying at $7 here, who's only looking for a FOMO trade, has no bloody right to tell the management and all these people that have supported it, oh, that's bad for the stockholder. What's good for the stockholder is keeping these companies alive, if they're genuine. We know this one is because I, we bothered to look it up. And there's an article, I think, on Trade's Community. So what would you do? I ask you the question. Let alone, I'm not saying the extreme overbought while we shorted it, but well, that's why they do secondaries, right, mate? Look at that volume, Jesus. So hopefully that gives an insight. If anyone's got any questions on any more of that, Shoot, it's good to see people talking on, uh, what do you call it, uh, YouTube and that. Very, it's good to interact. We don't know what we see. We might take some stuff for granted if it's any relevance and stuff like that, right? Um, so please share. Um, I think we covered all the markets, didn't we? So let's, uh, there was a bond market today. I didn't. So bonds, you so you got to look at all the different things that factor. Right now, bonds are more about um, safe haven sort of stuff. So you can see what gold's doing. You know, people buy oil too for safe haven, believe it or not. So um, or they might want to invest in certain things. Um, and the other, someone made a comment they haven't heard the Fed for a while. Well, they're in a quiet period. They've got to be in that quiet period when they're before our next meeting, right? So... That's what's going on there. And there's some good debate there, okay? So we're seeing fear, genuine fear in the markets, right? Oil, nickel, war. Jay Powell has made it pretty clear he can't control supply inflation. 
It's not out of the cards that they don't raise rates. It's not out of the cards that they start pump priming, right? In fact, one of those pumps today, I remember now, Madhavi, was when Schumer said that they're going to do a $15 billion COVID payment or something. Something like that anyway, right? So they're thinking that way. And it's politics, right? You've got an election coming up in the U.S., you got you got in England. You got the bloke. Uh, I tell you what, it got that party off the front page over there for Boris Yeltsin, huh? <laughs> yeah. You know what's that? The, the, not Boris Yeltsin. I mean, not Boris, Boris Yeltsin. Yeah. I keep calling him that. Yeah, yeah, Boris Johnson. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, they well, I I think they drink about the same, or is that just a bad rumor? I don't know. Oh. Who you knows? They drink like a fish. <laughs> I still remember. Uh, no offense to anyone who's Russian who's listening, but my the only thing I really remember about Boris Yeltsin is getting down an airplane. I think it was in Ireland, and he fell down the stairs. You know, remember because he was hammered and he'd been drinking on the plane. So, um, Im- so imp- 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 impressive, I guess. <laughs> I guess you could say that's impressive in some respects, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, guess. You know, <laughs> I, I, I think he's still alive. I can't believe it. Boris Yeltsin's you know, still like, alive? Back in the, isn't he? I know Gorbachev, Gorbachev's still alive. I thought Yeltsin died. I could be wrong because he's pretty yeah, unhappy. Yeah, Gorbachev. I think Gorbachev is, is still alive. And he's older than Yeltsin, I thought. Yeah, 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 for sure. But he's healthier, right? So, Yeah, he had his 91st yeah, yeah, birthday. He had his 91st birthday the other day, I thought. So, yeah. anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, well, let's have a look what we got coming tomorrow, people. We don't want to keep you all night. You know, there is a systematic change that's going to happen. And it's going to be interesting how all this turns out. So this will, this this period will go down in history as you know as the next big change in in how the world operates or how the world banking is going to be and what countries are going to survive, what's going to happen. So it's going to be interesting times after all this. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. we're we're coming, uh, we're coming right off. Um... The, the two years of lockdown with a virus and, and all that sort of thing. So just when you think it can't get any worse, like that was the memes, right? 2022 can't be worse than 2020 or 2021. Well, there you have it. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. You know how you have like a period of peace, then you have a period of chaos, then you have a period of civilizations, you know? So we're we're going to I don't know which period it is, but we're going to one of those periods now. Right. Well, I saw an interesting. So back in the day, I think it was the Spanish flu or one of those plagues that created the massive inflation and the situation we got now, and with they, the war and all. The, it had the war and and uh, I think it was that one. Yeah, Spanish flu and war, and then you got inflation, and they blamed it on that. And so people are comparing that to. Um, COVID. It was a lot different seen, this time around. But I've seen that calendar where, where, where it's off like for the next 50 years is going to be peace. Next 50 years is going to be turmoil, you know. So they have like these periods that I guess goes by some kind of calendar, how the world's going to be in that time. Yeah, because chaos or viruses, you know. And, and we're, we're in one of those types of um, cycles, I guess they call it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, People are predictable in an unpredictable way, and it's how they react to it. So just the way COVID is, is they didn't react like this at all to the previous SARS or what was known as the Hong Kong flu. Um, so things get, there's nefarious things at play, like politics getting involved and all that too. But the people, as you said, get very um, complacent with things. And that's, I think the, the massive complacency and entitlement has created a lot of these situations, right? You know, uh, you can say that with Putin's got like that. The US got like that. The West got like that. 
in different situations, right? So then you get the end sure. game, and that's why a lot of this, the cycles, there's different waves in analysis. It's like the Kondratiev wave. Actually, he was a Russian scholar. Stuff like that. That's the really long term one. I think it's seventy five years. But you got all these things that are fairly predictable, but unpredictable. So when they happen, you go, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I expected that. Well, you don't. The oil one was very predictable for the reasons we pointed out. So tomorrow, what do we have? What do we have tomorrow? Let me go. What is tomorrow? Wednesday. Jeez. I mean, well, I wish I was joking, but this has been such a hectic... I wouldn't mind just bloody taking a holiday, to be honest. So there was a bond auction today. I don't know if I shared it. There's a $48 billion three-year. Uh, the high yield was 177 and a half. Uh, the bid to cover was 239 Indirects were 55.1. And directs were 18.6. So... Um, so that's a three year. So that's it's not a terrible. Uh, it's it was a pretty lukewarm bond auction, but it's not like a Z rating or anything. So so it was Luke landed ahead as you'd expect. Now the reason I'm talking about that, you got two market movers tomorrow. And remember, it's a quiet period for the Fed. They're not allowed to talk. Uh, so tomorrow you got a thirty four billion ten year. Reopening, and that's a big one because that's the benchmark. Remember, tens in every country. Um, and you got the next day, Thursday, you got a twenty billion dollar reopening. Okay, so you could have you're going to get volatility more than likely out of those two bond up markets because for the first time, when you get war, this is the first time in my life anyway. You've seen war with this kind of inflation, so you've got two facets that can move a bond market, and it's basically which one wins, if that makes sense. So you got those coming tomorrow, right? Um, as far as economic data, we know every Wednesday we get, um, what do you call it? We get uh, the EIA. Geez, I'm bloody tired. The EIA uh, number. Um, and tomorrow we get the mortgage numbers in the morning, which can affect the, the, the bond market as well. And we have the OAA uh, out. So let me just quick check one thing I've been remiss of. Uh, we did have the a API numbers out today. So I was busy. Uh, and so I don't think I shared this with you, but I'll share it with you. It's been a long day. Oh, wow. So this is an interesting headline that just came across Madhavi. Yeah. Uh, so as you know, there's been talk between the United States and Venezuela. Venezuela has just made an announcement they've released a U.S. hostage. I didn't know they had hostages. That's how much out of that loop I am. What's this? I know there was one of them. It just says Venezuela has released a U.S. hostage. I don't have any more data, unfortunately. Um the uh, and you know you're gonna love this one. OPEC Secretary General Barkindo says there is no shortage of oil. And then just someone answered, dude. Someone made this comment. It's sad when too many drugs does to people. That's what that's what a news writer sent me the message. I don't know where he got it from, but anyway. Uh, because OPEC's not keeping up with the quota, obviously, and then you got Russia. Um, so that's that. Just let me check one more thing before we go, if there's something everyone needs to be aware of. So, yeah. Also, Russia wants to, for the Iran nuclear, they want to throw in that they, they're not going to be sanctioned to do trade with Iran. They threw that in there last minute. Oh, that's just come in too. That was that came out yesterday, if you if you remember. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I thought you might have said there's something more. There's not good. No, no, no. no. It came out yesterday, I believe. Yeah. So give me what? Wow, I can't believe it's six bloody thirty. So hang on, let me check one more thing. Something here about Kathy Wood. 
She, geez, Kathy would got oil, right? What did she say it wouldn't get up to? How wrong has she been about certain things, right? Seriously. Yeah. I'm just seeing if there's any... Yeah, so I was looking for this one guy who does a good summary on oil. So PXD CEO says POTUS should call MBS if you want to increase production. We're not. See, a lot of these oil companies don't want to fall in the trap of killing oil and getting down the debt trap again, right? Because that's what they'd have to do. Um, OPEC says Saudi UAE, UAE won't pick up his call. Well, Biden uh, doesn't talk to a little, little head chopper. Uh, he only talks to the dad, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the way he's, yeah, yeah. So that's pretty well all the news there. Um, so it does, it's interesting what... So it's getting to the way where you've got to be very wary of what you read in the oil business. Because um, it sounds terrible, but it used to be very blatant that certain hedge funds had an insight into influencing bullish and bearish situation. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, um, I, I don't think, did I read out the AIP, API? So API came out with a 2.8 billion build for crude, a draw of 1.9 for gasoline, a huge draw in distillates of 5.4, and Cushing was a smaller than expected 367 draw. Remember, Cushing is what affects WTI, uh, remember, these are API numbers, so they're not taken too seriously because they can really vis um, differ from the EIA, but machines don't care about that. that. That has been moving it around. Okay, that's about it. Also, remember, Sarah uh, week is on, so you could get some uh, odd headlines. It's going to affect oil and natural gas, and actually some of the products as well because they're all there. Um Bond markets tomorrow. Ukraine, obviously, and Russia, that's going to go on till it doesn't. Anything else, mate? I think that's about it. Uh, there's a few more earnings to come out. We didn't really play earnings today. Oh, yeah, we did. We played one, Bumble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was MongoDB. They went up on it. Uh, so you're still getting, and that's another thing. A lot of people just trade certain things. That's all they trade earnings. They only trade those flow to things. They only trade futures. So don't assume everyone is affected by those intramarkets for those individual stocks. But at the end of the day, the rubber always meets the road. Always remember that, right? And not everyone is, is just some short-term day trader. They're building up strategies and books and all that sort of stuff. So I think that's about it. Is vol is volatility radar still here? Um, anything to check in? I think we're all kind of done. So thank you for listening. Uh, like it would is always appreciated. Um, follow us. Uh, subscribe to get these. We apologise we're not on Twitter or anything like that in these markets. They're just too volatile. We don't have time for that, unfortunately, to do either a service, right? So, But we do try to keep you up to date here, keep following us there, um, and we try to put out as much as we can, either us or other people involved in Traders Community through their other handles. Um, so thank you for listening. Have a great evening. Good luck. Stay safe. Enjoy your steak and wine tonight or whatever you're having. And I know we'll enjoy ours. So see you. Thanks, uh, Madavi, mate, and we'll see everyone tomorrow.